Hi, I'm going to talk to you today about perspective in Renaissance painting. We'll look at some of the new techniques that we can identify in the course of the Italian Renaissance that painters used for creating the illusion of depth in two-dimensional paintings. While artists in classical antiquity experimented with strategies to create the illusion of depth in two-dimensional paintings, these techniques mostly disappear after the fall of the Roman Empire and the end of the classical period, and we don't really see them again in art until the Italian Renaissance. You'll recall that the Italian Renaissance artists and the great thinkers of the Renaissance were very interested in classical antiquity. So it's not surprising that some of these techniques would begin to be reborn. You know, the Renaissance means rebirth. So we can identify specific techniques as they begin to emerge in the early Renaissance. As you know, we typically break the Renaissance into two periods, the early Renaissance, about 1400 to 1490, and the high Renaissance, which is 1490 to 1520. Artists will refine these techniques dramatically so that by the high Renaissance, we see notably realistic representations of the natural world. Remember, none of these dates are exact. These are the dates that most historians use. We look at two points to tell us when the Italian Renaissance is beginning. One is events on a historical timeline, and the other is points of evolution of an artistic style. So we can look at history in terms of the emergence of new techniques and technology. The purpose of this video is to show you how to identify three of the techniques that were used in the Italian Renaissance. Chiaroscuro, linear perspective, and sfumato. Today, we're going to look at an artist named Giotto. We think of Giotto as a very early Renaissance artist or a proto-Renaissance artist because he's actually painting well before the 1400s when we normally think of the early Renaissance starting. Let's look at this fresco called Lamentation. Its topic is the disposition of the crucified Christ. You can see his body's been taken down from the cross, and he's being mourned by his followers, by his mother, and even the angels that are hanging in the air above him. So this fresco shows a break with the previous style of art, the Byzantine style that predated the Renaissance. Byzantine art is decorative, ornamented, and idealized. It is often made of little pieces of tile in mosaic. It tends to look very flat to our eyes, with no depth. So let's look again at this Giotto piece. Although it looks really shallow to our modern eye, it actually anticipates the Renaissance techniques of creating depth and represents a clear movement toward a more natural and lifelike style in contrast to the Byzantine style. The first thing we want to look at is the technique of chiaroscuro. Notice the weightier, more three-dimensional figures in realistic poses. Giotto is using a very early attempt at chiaroscuro, creating the illusion of depth through the use of contrasting light and dark. The word chiaroscuro translates literally as light, dark. Chiaro means light, oscuro means dark in Italian. Visually, lighter areas advance toward the eye, and darker areas look like they recede. You can really see this here in the folds of the women's robes. Giotto has created the illusion of folds, where the parts that are tucked in are darker and the parts that are closer to the eye are lighter. 
You can also see chiaroscuro in the arm of the body of Christ and the face here of the Mother Mary contrasted against the dark figure behind her. You can even see it in the body of Christ. There are some early attempts at musculature or a modeled body here in the body of Christ. Over here in this forearm, you'll have a contour line. That's a line that goes around the form. And you also have this modeling where the use of light and dark create an illusion of weightiness, three-dimensionality, and depth. And this is going to make these figures look more convincingly human. Notice the idealized virgin, Mary, the mother of Christ. This is a virgin and child in the Byzantine style. Remember that we mentioned that Byzantine art tended to be ornamental. This one is gilded with what is probably actually gold, and everything's flattened out. You'll also notice that the infant Christ kind of looks like a 30-year-old. There's less of an interest in making it look realistic and more of an interest in idealizing the subject. So over here with Giotto and his proto-Renaissance piece, you actually have a more emotional facial expression and gestures, and Mary looks more like an individual person with more individual features than we see over here in this Byzantine image. Something else that is new in this Proto-Renaissance era is an increased use of a distinct setting. Unlike the flat backgrounds in the previous style, Giotto introduces elements of landscape to produce a distinct setting for his scene. Note the hill in the foreground with the tree. It almost looks more like a fence or a wall than it does a mountain, but it has a tree growing out of it. We can also see that there are mountains in the background and this play of dark and light are happening. In this painting, we also see the use of linear perspective. Linear perspective is a technique to create depth by using parallel lines that converge toward a vanishing point. Notice that if you took a ruler and you drew lines in these almost architectural elements, they point to the central figures here of Christ and Mary here in Lamentation. During the course of the Renaissance, we're watching artists develop and become more refined with their techniques. With this development, images become more realistic. So about 100 years after Giotto began experimenting with chiaroscuro and landscape elements, Masaccio, in The Tribute Money, demonstrates increasingly sophisticated techniques for creating the illusion of depth and realism. Artists were developing because at this time they tended to work from live models. They also studied anatomy, often illegally. They were really not supposed to be looking at dead bodies, but they often were. They observed the effects of shadow and light. In fact, there are treatises written about shadow and light at this point, and they use the scientific method. Let's also consider the picture plane and perspective. These are a few terms that you need to be familiar with. The picture plane is the two-dimensional surface of the painting. The picture plane was conceived as a sort of window through which we view the three-dimensional world. The architect Filippo Brunelleschi formulated the first laws of linear perspective, how all parallel lines in a visual field seem to converge in a single vanishing point on the horizon. He was most likely informed by Latin translations of Arab Muslim treatises on optical devices. 
We know that the Italian Renaissance great thinkers and philosophers really believed in the value of classical antiquity, but they also valued learning from other cultures, such as the Arab Muslims. The Islamic world made great achievements in fields such as physics, math, and astronomy, and these scientific achievements spread throughout the Mediterranean, influencing Italian painters' understanding of perspective. In Masaccio's Tribute Money, we see linear perspective used not only to create depth, but also to create a focal point, also known as the vanishing point. All of the lines converge at a point just over the head of Christ, the central figure in the composition. If you took a ruler and drew lines over these diagonals that are created in the image, you would see how the eye is drawn toward a single vanishing point. So these lines, such as this diagonal line at the base of the building, the ledge of the building, the steps, the lines formed by these mountains, the top and bottom of the seashore, they all lead the eye to a single vanishing point. They are creating depth. So this building, for example, doesn't look flat. The far side appears to recede from the eye. That creates the illusion of depth. So we can see increasing complexity in the use of linear perspective between the time of Giotto to Masaccio, which is about 100 years. The last technique we're going to look at is sfumato. Sfumato, in addition to chiaroscuro and linear perspective, helped Renaissance artists create the illusion of depth. Sfumato literally means smoke or smokiness. Sfumato means that objects in the foreground are painted with more clarity and detail while those that are meant to appear farther away are blurrier and less distinct. They look smoky. See how the Mona Lisa, in Italian called La Gioconda, her fingers are very distinct. You can see her fingernails, and you can see these very distinct folds in her garments. You can see, if you look at it, what she's wearing over her shoulder is semi-translucent. You can actually see through it. It looks very realistic, very detailed. But then you can see behind her a landscape. You have a road and some hills here. And then you have water. And here's some more linear perspective that's leading right to her eye level. And finally, you have the sky and these mountains in the farthest background. They're smoky, they're blurry, they're less distinct. So that's called sfumato. Here's another example of sfumato by Leonardo da Vinci. A lot of his work looks really smoky and blurry. The earlier styles used a lot of contour lines. Whereas you see these blurrier, smokier lines here by the time we get to Leonardo in the 1400s. You see very distinct features in the foreground. Look at these feet. Their toes are so distinctive. You also have this very distinct setting with rocks, and mountains, and trees. Then in the background, you have fuzzy hills and water. It is less distinct than this foreground that's close to you, where you can see in great detail the facial features, the expressions on the faces of the subjects and the fabrics. So this is how Leonardo creates the illusion of depth in a two-dimensional painting. Next, let's look at Leonardo's Last Supper, which is considered to have been painted between 1495 and 1498. By this time, the techniques for creating the illusion of depth are more sophisticated, and painters are using all of them. Look at the illusion of depth in the upper room. Even the ceiling planks are all leading toward the vanishing point. 
the center of the composition, which is Christ at the Last Supper. Notice, even the feet of the apostles underneath the table are creating these lines that are leading toward the center of the composition. That's linear perspective. Notice also the chiaroscuro in the bodies in the apostles. Look at the shading of this one's face to create that weightiness, three-dimensionality. We also have sfumato, the more distinct things in the foreground and the blurrier things in the background. Leonardo loves to put landscapes in the background that you view through a window. So later, in 1510, we have Raphael's Disputation of the Holy Sacrament. Raphael uses all three of these techniques for creating this illusion of depth. We can see how much more realistic this image appears again compared to the Giotto, which had appeared groundbreaking in its realism only about 200 years before. So now it's your turn. Looking at this image, first identify chiaroscuro, the way that objects appear weightier and more three-dimensional because of the contrast of light and dark. Second, identify linear perspective, which is the convergence of these imaginary parallel lines. Some are actual parallel lines created by architectural and landscape elements, and even the arrangement of objects in the picture. Third, identify sfumato. That's that smokiness artists use to create the illusion that certain elements in the picture plane are far away, so we can't see them distinctly. They look smoky. Pause the video and take your time looking at the painting. After you have identified examples of the three techniques, Play the video to see a few possible answers.